Mini PCs, I know, I just can't get enough of them. I've got the UM560 XT. What's this one's claim to fame? Oh, it's a couple of hundred dollars. <laughs> what? Yeah, the bare bones version of this is just over $200, but it's a six core Ryzen 5. It's a 5000 series CPU. It's on fire sale because there's six and 7000 series CPUs, but that doesn't mean it's slow. In fact, you can get a lot out of it. Let's take a look. Now as configured, this one has 16 gigabytes of memory and a 512 gig NVMe. We don't recommend customers remove the CPU cooler, cooler because liquid metal. There's no need to take one of these completely all the way apart. This is actually the same form factor as many other Minis Forum PCs that we've reviewed previously. This has got two and a half gig LAN. It's got two five gigabit USB ports, dual HDMI, two USB 2.0 ports. At the front, two type C. One's a 10 gigabit and the other one is a combination USB type C plus display port out. Well, USB C display port alt mode. Combination headphone microphone jack, power button, and a reset button. In the box, we have a 65 watt power brick. This is, you know, not, not a compact GAN power brick, which you wouldn't expect it to be. And it uses a standard DC barrel jack. You've got an HDMI cable, a handy little stand. I'm just gonna leave the stand in there. A Visa mounting bracket. These are always very nice because you can mount these on the back of a monitor and have your computer completely out of the way as well as a spare set of rubber feet. This is a nice touch in case you do upgrades later. In case you're wondering what this little thing is, this is an adapter that'll let you plug in your SATA SSD, if you get a SATA SSD, to the motherboard. It uses this tiny little proprietary connector. If you're the kind of person who throws away your boxes, just go ahead and put this inside the Minis Forum machine so you don't lose it, because you never know. I mean, you could get an eight or a 16 terabyte SATA hard drive in the future. I have a feeling that those are gonna be around for a long time, and that would really augment the storage in this at some point in the future. <laughs> right now, an eight terabyte SATA SSD costs way too much. Now I know some of the mini PCs I've been reviewing lately have included DDR5. Remember, this is an older platform, so this is dual channel DDR4. As with everything, when you first take it out of the box, you're gonna need to do some updates. These have an older version of Windows 11 on them, and that's because the newer version of Windows 11 is real aggressive about making you sign up for a Microsoft account, which is annoying and stupid, and they really shouldn't do that, and gets on my nerves, and I digress. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do, anytime you get a new machine, go to Windows Update, download the Windows Update. Of course, that is if you're gonna install Linux, don't worry about it, just go ahead and install Linux. But presumably, if you got Windows, you just need to install Windows Update. Eventually, when you get all these installed, it'll say, hey, would you like to install Windows 10 22H2 or maybe 23H1? Soon, 23H2. Those, that's, that's units of time, measurement. You wanna do that to get the updates because Microsoft basically stops updating all but the newest versions of Windows. At least those updates are gonna install really quickly thanks to the 2.5 gig NIC that Minis Forum has built in. It's very nice to see a machine of this class and especially at this price point have that two and a half gig NIC. Good job. Now let's get right to the benchmarking. First up, CPU-Z. This is an incredibly impressive single and multi-core score given that this is, you know, a 5,000 series part. What the heck is going on here? How does this have such a high single thread score? And the answer is unlimited power budget. Now remember how I said our power brick is 65 watts? Why then does our kilowatt meter show that it's consuming 70 watts? Well, it does burst up to 70 watts and then it sort of backs off a little bit. So if you're looking at, you know, doing a 25 or a 30 watt charging thing with your phone through the USB-C port or something like that, you don't really have the power budget to do that. No complaints here. I mean, I like that they're putting all of the power budget into the actual compute of the thing. That's perfectly fine. And it goes to show you that you can't necessarily judge the performance based on the model number alone. We're running DDR4 3200, dual channel, of course and we're rocking about 82 nanoseconds of latency. You know, that's untuned, unoptimized. You can get better latency, but let's be honest. The graphics in this chip, nothing to write home about. Even for eSports gaming, really, in 2023, it's insufficient. This is purely just for productivity tasks. Now, it does have encode, decode engines in hardware, so you can do 4K streaming. You can watch 4K movies on this. The dual HDMI out on the back of it will make that a pretty handy choice for this. You can run dual monitors. Well, heck, you can run triple monitors if you're willing to use one of your USB-C ports for that. 
And it is nice that it's got four Type-A ports on the back, so I mean, that is an option. But dual 4K60 monitors on this platform, you know, again, excellent productivity. Plus with the Visa mount in the box, and the fact it's only a couple hundred dollars for the bare bones version, well, there's a lot to like here. The bundled SSD in this configuration, it's a Fison based ES 5 something or other. They didn't even bother naming the drive really. It's a bog standard 512 gigabyte SSD from basically the previous generation. It's about 2.4 gigabytes per second read and one point something gigabytes per second write. It's not a performance champion. But it does the job for what this machine is. It's, this thing's so cheap, what did you expect? It's This is pretty good for the price point. Stop complaining. Now in terms of fan noise, sometimes these small form factor machines, they dump a lot of power and they juice the fans and sometimes there's not even necessarily a relationship between the fan noise and the performance of the machine. The fan noise on this is audible but not annoying. It's sort of a, a whoosh sound more than a sort of whiny buzzing sound. That said, you can hear the fan when it ramps up for maximum performance, but under no normal productivity tasks, you're not going to hear it. You know, as I said before, the physical form factor of this machine is basically the same as we've seen from Mini's forum before, just some different innards. And given that this form factor was also designed to support an eight core with even higher clocks, if you, uh, you know, if the, the quietness of the machine is important to you, then the fact that this is six cores at a lower clock means that it's not gonna produce as much heat and it's gonna run a little cooler and maybe the fan doesn't have to ramp as hard. Factors to consider, if that's important to you. For the GPU, there's no RDNA here or anything like that. It's the old school Vega, so that's why I say, you know, eSports, not even. I mean, it's hard to believe how far we've come in just a couple of years. I mean, now we've got RDNA 3 embedded, which can actually present some viable gaming scenarios in 1080p in, in an APU. I mean, that feels like a lifetime ago, but it's only been a couple of years. There was only a couple of years ago where this was the state of the art and the leader in the world for built-in CPU, GPU. And it's still pretty darn good a couple of years later. It's just that we've come so far in such a short amount of time. It's sort of scary to sit and think about. Anyway, if you're considering one of these, uh, you know, it's pretty powerful for what it is. It is a couple of hundred bucks, but for a couple of hundred bucks, you'd be hard pressed to build a more capable, more powerful system more inexpensively. If you don't need expansion slots or the ability to add more M.2 storage or really anything beyond just another SATA drive. I mean, don't forget, you can you can add some more slower SATA flash with this. Uh, it's an okay little machine. I mean, you could get two, three, four years out of this if all you're doing is word processing and email and internet stuff and connecting to other things and chatting with people online and maybe some web games and uh, some really, really, really super lightweight stuff. But if you spend even just another hundred dollars, you would actually get a pretty viable gaming experience for esports and other things. So you should definitely check out the other machines that Minis Forum has. Now, granted, at a couple of hundred bucks, you're also going to be scrounging around your parts bin or uh, digging up old dead laptops to harvest the storage and memory from it. But the storage and memory upgrades from Minis Forum prices generally are pretty reasonable. So you can also just order it with memory and storage and your windows license because that's a little bit of a headache sometimes or just run linux on it linux of course works perfectly this is an extremely well supported platform on linux at this point because it's a couple of years old it's basically plug and play pretty much any distro you want to use including the really noob friendly distros like pop os you can just install immediately from a usb stick and you're good to go and those linux distros will provide a perfectly reasonable uh, linux experience uh Anything you want to do on the web, anything you want to do with email, document creation, productivity, productivity tasks, basically, works great out of the box. Very, very impressive. I'm Waddle, this is Level 1. I'm signing out. You can find me in the Level 1 forums. Thanks again to Minis Forum for sending this over. I've got some longer term plans for that. I'm cooking up something. It's going to be interesting. You'll see. All right, I'm signing out. I'll see you there.